Hi everyone and welcome to another First Chapter Friday. My name is Fernanda and I'm one of the children's librarians here at the Alameda Free Library. So for our First Chapter Friday today, we're going to be reading a book called Cream Buns and Crime. Tips, tricks, and tales from the Detective Society. This is part of the series called A Murder Most Unladylike Collection. This book was written by Robin Stevens. Now, if you like mysteries, you'll like this one. This is a story that follows a girl named Daisy Wells and Hazel Wong along through their whole detective society. They're two very bright young girls who love solving crimes. And so let's dive in. In the first chapter, it is called How to Set Up your own detective society. And here are the tips and tricks that both Daisy and Hazel have. Hello, aspiring detectives. Daisy Wells here. Hazel and I have agreed that readers of this book ought to know how to put a detective society together so that they can prepare themselves to counter criminal activity. We have decided to explain our methods here. Please note that Hazel and I have rather different ideas when it comes to setting up a detective society. Mine are better because I am an excellent detective society president, but you might as well have Hazel's too. So here are the crucial steps you need to follow to create your own detective society. Find a notebook to use as a case book. Pick up a squashed fly biscuit if you have good taste like me, or a char chocolate bourbon if you are more like Hazel. And we can begin. Number one, choose your members. I would advise you to keep your society to two members, if possible. This way you won't have anyone interfering or giving away society secrets. Hazel, on the other hand, thinks that additional members should be allowed, provided they are people you can trust. She believes that working together is the better option because you can share clues and information and so cover more ground. I am not sure, although I admit there is some truth in what she says. Our own assistant members are dorm mates, Kitty, Lavina, and Beanie, have been quite resourceful at times. But remember, your society must be extremely careful when selecting its members. Make sure that every member promises to keep the society a secret. To diligently look for clues and to do everything it takes to pursue truth and justice. Number two. Choose your detective society's name. Every good society needs an excellent detective name. Hazel and I chose the Wells and Wong Detective Society, and Alexander and George, our greatest rivals, chose the Junior Pinkertons. Those names are taken now, so you will have to come up with something different, but just as brilliant. If it helps, you have names that should sound nice together, the way Hazel and I do, but even if you don't, think about words that are to do with detection or criminal activity, and you'll have a serviceable society name in no time. Number three, give out detective roles. First and most important, you will need a president. The president runs the society, makes all the most important decisions, and catches the criminal at the end of each case. It is the most important and responsible role by far, and it is also the most glamorous. You must also make sure you have a vice president and the secretary. This can be the same person as in our society, or if you insist on letting more people in, different ones. The vice president's main job is to support the president in everything they do and say. The vice president is the Watson to the president's Sherlock, the Hastings to their parrot. 
They may occasionally have ideas and opinions themselves, though the president shouldn't allow this too often. It is the secretary's job to write up all the society's case notes in a neat and methodical manner. Do make sure that you pick someone with decent handwriting. Hazel's handwriting is very nice when she is not using shorthand. All other members should begin as assistants and rise up the ranks if they are good at their jobs. Assign each assistant a task and remember to let people play their strengths. For instance, Lavina is not afraid to get her hands dirty. This is alarming, but it can also be useful. Kitty, because she loves gossip, is a great noticer of things. And Beanie, well, Beanie is wonderfully small, which means she is often overlooked and can therefore observe suspects without being noticed herself. Number four, make your pledge. Once you have found your members you can trust and decided on everyone's roles, the next step is for everyone to take the society's pledge. Your pledge is a sort of promise. You are vowing to use all your skills to find clues and evidence to report any observations to your supervisor members and most important, uh, to keep all detective business a secret. No one wants any grown-ups involved unless they absolutely have to. If you don't want to think up your own pledge, I have decided to allow you to use ours. This is very kind of me and you ought to thank me. Do you swear to do a good and clever member of the detective society and to logically detect the crimes presented to you using all the cleverness you have, not replacing reliance on, not placing reliance on grown-ups, especially the police? Do you solemnly swear never to conceal a vital clue from your detective society president and vice president and to do exactly what they say? Do you promise never to mention this to another soul, living or dead, on pain of medieval tortures? At this point, each member must say, I do. Then it is official. Number five, create a secret handshake. Every society needs a secret handshake. Ensures yours, ensure yours is as complicated and devious as possible and practice it regularly. Number six, decide on a time and place for meetings. Next, you must think up of a place and time to hold your meetings. The best meeting locations in my experience are empty dorm rooms, ordinary bedrooms will also do, locked bathrooms with the water running to mask the sound of your voices or small cupboards such as linen closets, but anywhere secluded but safe works very well. Make sure your secretary has light and space for note-taking. Meetings should be held regularly and they become especially important when you are on a case. Remember that occasionally you may need to call an emergency meeting, for example. If a crucial piece of evidence comes to light in your latest case, Middle of the night meetings are by far the most exciting. Invite your friends to your house if you are not lucky enough to go to boarding school and then hold a midnight feast. Number seven, keep a case book. This is one of the things that the secretary does. I don't really bother about it, but as I discovered during the bonfire night murder case, it is rather important. Not taking notes will leave any detective, no matter how brilliant, in a dreadful muddle. I am now rather impressed with Hazel, who is rigorous about recording everything in her casebook. It is essential that a decent written record is kept of all the meetings that take place and of any developments in the case. If something were to be missed, a crucial piece of evidence might be lost and the pieces of the puzzle would never fit together. Hazel is also very clever at compiling a suspect list for every case we investigate. 
Doing this is a sensible, logical way and crossing off suspects once we have ruled them out is very important in our hunt for the true culprit. Number eight, get your kit together. A detective society should always have the right tools for their job. This should include a fingerprint, fingerprint kit. If you can't get a hold of a, of a proper professional one, make your own. We will explain how later in this book. A reliable wrist watch, some string or measuring tape for analyzing suspicious objects, and a selection of disguises such as wigs, hats, and old clothes. A magnifying glass is perhaps the most crucial item and no detective should ever be without one. I keep a miniature version of on my person at all times. Finally, Hazel has asked me to add that a ready supply of pencils and a notebook should be carried by your secretary, while tea and cakes will keep your detective strength up. No one can detect on an empty stomach. And as you know, the detective society never says no to tea. Number nine, establish a rivalry with another society. Hazel thinks that working with another team of detectives can help you solve your case. I couldn't disagree more. At best, you are at risk of sharing your glory. At worst, you may find that your rivals reveal your secrets and ruin your case. Of course, Alex and George were occasionally useful to use during our Cambridge case, but I feel sure we would have solved it in on our own way anyway. My advice is to find another group of detectives and take every opportunity to pit your wits against them. It is most important to discover which is the best society. And I think we're on the last one. Number 10, constant vigilance. Lastly, Hazel would like me to point out that the best detectives stay safe. This is another way of saying that a dead detective is a very useless detective indeed. It is the most important that you do not put yourself in too much danger while you are investigating your cases. Make sure that your hiding places and footholds are secure, that your suspects do not notice your presence, and that you Always alert the other members of the society as to where you are and what you are doing. Good luck, detectives, and may you solve every case. And that's the end of the first chapter of Cream Bonds and Crime. Again, if you love mysteries, definitely check this one out. If you love this book, there are many more in the series that you can look for that follow these two same characters. Until another First Chapter Friday, I'll see you guys again. Take care.